lift your hands and pray that God will reveal his son to you this morning. John chapter 12 verse 20, the Bible said and certain of the Greeks came to Philip of the side of Galilee and they demanded of him that they would see Jesus. Lift your hands and pray that God will speak to you this morning. The Lord will speak to you. God will speak to you. God will speak to you. That his word will impact your life. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the things that God did throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament was to raise men after the kind of his generals. So if you look through the pages of the Bible, you realize that Moses had Joshua. Elijah had Elisha. Jesus had Peter. Paul had Timothy. Each general in the kingdom, God made sure that he raised men after their kind. This morning, we are here to receive from God and through one of the men that God has raised through our father, Bishop Samuel Osei Tutu. That hand clap can be higher. Hallelujah. In the account of Ephesians, the Bible says that he that descended is the same who ascended. And when he ascended, he gave gifts unto men, some to become prophets, some to become apostles, teachers, pastors, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Each of the sons that God is raising through our father have a peculiar touch of ministry. And because of the grace of God on our father, God has raised men in that direction. This morning, we are privileged to have one of the anointed, anointed preachers that God is raising for this generation and this ministry. He is married and he carries a pinpoint dexterity to the word of God, has a sound theological expose when it comes to biblical narratives, when it comes to Bible knowledge and doctrines of the Bible. This morning, I'm privileged to introduce to you one of the men that God is raising for our generation. He is the pastor in charge of our UCC branch. Ladies and gentlemen, let's receive the ministry of Minister Eric Beidou Bissu. Can we give him a headquarters welcome? Please, can we do a better one for Jesus? A better one for Jesus. Can we add a shout to it? And celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Please lift your hands with me. I want you to speak to the Lord right now and tell him that, oh God, touch me this morning by your word. Touch me by your word. Touch me by your word. In the name of Jesus. Ah, I'm not here because of any man, but I'm here because of you, O oh God. Touch me by your word. 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 When I'm here, I will go to rain. Matisse, I was Sam, no man, quabe bread. When I'm here, I will go to see. So, what's Sam, no, you're Jackie? You're Jim, but you're here. If we send me, I was Sam. When I'm here, I will get a me. Matisse, I was Sam, no, you're Matisse was 
of somebody let every satanic yoke be broken let every burden be lifted and let your people be liberated in the name of jesus i bless you oh god and i thank you for your presence that is dwelling in this household i bless you oh god in jesus name i pray amen, amen. can you clap your hands for jesus can you clap your hands for the lord jesus and please be seated I greet you all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I thank God for the life of our source. There's one thing that I always say that whatever you see any of us do here has nothing to do with us, but has everything to do with the one we are connected to. This is where God makes the nobodies a somebody. And, and through the bishop and the anointed servant of God, some of us who were nobodies, who were at the backside of life, through him as we continually follow him, following him we are seeing the light small small hallelujah Amen. and i want to thank god so much especially for his life even though he's not here in person i believe his spirit is what is giving us the backing to even to do what we are doing hallelujah Amen. so please with a clap offering and a standing ovation i want us to honor our father and our bishop bishop samuel or said to the general overseer the father the backbone the visionary, the angel of Breakthrough Family Ministries International. God bless our father. God bless him so much. Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated. I also want to thank God for the life of 
the resident pastor of this ministry in the person of Pastor Emmanuel Saki Tofe. He has been an inspiration and a mentor to me. And I always say that he, when he gave me the first platform to preach, it came as a surprise. But sometimes there are people that can even see what is in you when you yourself have not even seen what is in you. And I, I'm always grateful for that. God bless you so much. I want to thank God for all the pastors and the ministers, my fellow ministers in the house. I salute all of you. God bless you and the elders and all of us in the house. God bless all of us for the wonderful work we are doing. Amen. And I also bring you special greetings from my own beloved wife, Mrs. Bridget Bisubedo. I know you are watching me. I want you to, I want you to back me with prayer. Hallelujah. So, in the month of September, it is our month of fruitfulness. And we have spoken a little on this subject. And so, this morning, I also want us to go into another dimension of fruitfulness. And the power in the sense has to come pepper so for be a far abas for ever. So I'm talking about fruitfulness in the area of soul winning and the benefits that come along with soul winning. So they can abas for a far a catcher home and name for so I be your poor or a catcher more. Beloved in Christ, one of the first things that God did after creating man in his own likeness and after his image was. To instruct him to be fruitful. Now, one thing I have come to know about God is that He will not ask you to do anything that He has not given you the ability to. And so before God instructs man to be fruitful, to be fruitful, it means he has put in man a seed that gives him the capacity and the potential to expand and to increase in life. So every man, by the sound of my voice, there is a potential to be great, a potential to be fruitful, to expand in any given situation. Now, to be fruitful simply means to increase, to grow or to expand. So, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, God blessed man and said to man that be fruitful and multiply. So that word there, be fruitful, as used in the Old Testament, signifies or sends out two ideas. Now the word means to be. And secondly, it also means to cause to be. So in the first sense, it describes an inherent power in you to increase and to expand. However, the second sense talks about your ability to cause something else that has been entrusted in your hands to increase. Now, oftentimes, when we are talking about fruitfulness, we are quick to limit it to only the first aspect, which talks about you increasing and expanding, but we forget about the second aspect that is talking about you bringing an increase to whatever that has been entrusted in your care. Now in the Bible there are men whose fruitfulness encompassed all the aspect of fruitfulness. A man like Joseph in the book of Genesis chapter 39 the verse number 2 to 4 
Joseph is an embodiment of fruitfulness. Because whatever that was entrusted in his hand prospered or saw increase and growth. So the Bible says that and the Lord was with Joseph and he was prosperous. He was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master. The Egyptian. I wonder how a man who is a slave in the house of his master can still be prosperous. And I have been pondering over this scripture. Give me the verse 3. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. So his master was a witness that whatever that came in the hands of Joseph saw increase and saw growth. Verse and because of that, what he did was that, and Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer of, over his house, and all that he had, he put into his hand. Why did he put all that he had into his hand? Because he saw that whatever that entered his hand began to see increase and expansion. And if that is the case, then I don't think about whether you are a servant or a slave. All I want to see is increase. So I'm going to give you all that I have in order to see expansion. Another man is called Joseph Jacob. Genesis chapter 30, verse 29 and 30. Genesis 30, 29 and 30. Jacob was another man whose fruitfulness also encompassed everything that was in his hand. So, this is what Joseph said. And Jacob said, he said, and he said unto him, thou knowest how I have served thee and how thy cattle was with me. Verse 30. For it was little which thou had before I came, and it is now increased unto a multitude, and the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming, and now when I shall provide for my own house also. So Jacob is telling his father-in-law Laban that before I came into your life, you had few, but by my coming into your life, now you have a multitude. So there is something about these men that caused everything that came around them to increase. And this is my prayer for somebody this morning. That everything that will come around you will begin to increase tremendously. That everything that touches your hand will begin to prosper like never before. There are some people, when things are prospering and they go near the thing, the thing begins to depreciate. But I pray that shall not be your story. When they give you little, it shall be mighty. I prophesy over your life, that business shall begin to increase. When your boss leaves the work in your hand, he will come and admit it increasing in the name of Jesus. I bless you in Jesus' name. Shout amen like a thunder. Amen. So, I want you to stay with me. I'm building a point. Now, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, when he came to this earth, he spoke clearly about his assignment. In Luke chapter 19 verse 10, he said, The Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. So Jesus had a soul winning assignment. Now when Jesus Christ was leaving the earth, the very last group of people that encountered him were given or entrusted with that same commission. 
na abra yesu efi asase wesu no omo na omo twa ne ho sia na no mo ka ne ho no juma die a ode ma mo no saa na na ono so ni and in order for them to be effective in that commission jesus told them not to depart from jerusalem until they had been empowered with the holy spirit so they can be effective in doing that work na yesu ka cho mo se ansa na mo betumi di wo aye juma no na aye ye omo no na mo fi jerusalem e ko pimre to me bi e be so in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 the bible said that you shall receive power after the holy spirit is come upon you and you shall be witnesses of me in jerusalem in judea in samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth it will come as much for it but who is the word you know i think i'm over here me and share for say i some cocoa ever was so i was samaria i will be a fan and so in act chapter 2 this scripture was fulfilled the bible says when they were gathered together with one accord in one place suddenly there was a sound from heaven that was like a mighty rushing wind that entered the place where they were and the bible says that uh, they appeared unto them cloven tongues of fire and they began to speak with new tongues and peter arose from the midst of the people and he began to preach to those that had gathered and three thousand souls were won to the body of christ to kai asuma for my etimi enu na o si na we ebe mu abra o mu twan e o pentecost da no o si na e cha e tutu o mo pempem na mu si asese mu kaka sa fofo peter sorry ye na o kan san panic chief ko fo na ko fo pempem bebre e na mu di o mo ma yesu and so the disciples began carrying the burden that jesus left with them they continued the soul winning business now in second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 and 18 the bible says that therefore if a man comes to christ he is a new creature and all things have passed away and behold all things have become new the verse 18 he says that the verse 18 says that God, through his son Jesus Christ, has reconciled us back to himself and he has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. So, being given the ministry of reconciliation means that we have been entrusted with the soul winning ministry. Every believer has been entrusted with a responsibility. The responsibility of winning souls. And so, the measure of your fruitfulness is not only by the number of cars you have accumulated and the number of houses you have built and the money in your bank account, but the measure of your fruitfulness fullness is also counted by how many souls you have added to the kingdom of God ever since Jesus entrusted the ministry of reconciliation in your hand the purpose of your salvation is for kingdom expansion the church of god must increase and overflow by your effort and my effort when we come together and we pursue the soul winning agenda the house of god will be filled to capacity but people are busily pursuing their own agenda in life and people are too busy with the things of life Philippians chapter 2 verse 21 the Bible says that for all seek their own and not that of Christ what is their own their own is their own business their own is their own children their own is their own work their own is their own pursuit in life but the things of Christ is evangelism soul winning the things of Christ is kingdom expansion Jesus came and made it clear he said that I must work the work of my father the business of my father that business is soul winning so thank God for all the 
things we have we have been able to bring to ourselves thank god for all the cars and the houses we are building thank god for all the increase but your fruitfulness is not complete until you have achieved something for the kingdom because when you die today no car will be taken to the grave when you die today no house will be taken to the grave but only that which you accomplish for the kingdom shall account for you i am i talking to somebody here i pray that we'll be injected with the zeal Amen. to go out and win souls for this kingdom to go out and expand this kingdom in the name of jesus praise the lord hallelujah matthew chapter 6 verse 33 the bible said that seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be given unto thee all these things is talking about all the things that the gentiles also pursue after all the pursuit of life everything that we have been busy in life for the bible says when we put god first he will give us all these things God has entrusted this ministry in our hands and we have to work hard to increase it because it is a measure of our fruitfulness. Now, every fruitful believer has a sequence of life which I call the believer's life cycle. And I want to take time and talk to you about the life cycle of a believer. First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5 downwards. First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5. You can see that there is a trend, there is a sequence that must be replicated in the life of every believer. So this is what Paul said. He said, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost in, and in much assurance as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. So here Paul is describing how the word of God came so powerfully to the people of Thessalonica. So that is the first stage of the cycle. You may not be a believer, but when the word of God comes in that power and might, what happens is that the word coming with power has an ability to turn your life around. So the first stage of the cycle is to receive the word. Verse 6. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit. So the second stage is, after they received the power of the word, they became followers of the word. They became followers of Paul and his people and became followers of God. Whenever the word of God comes mightily, what happens is that the word generates followers. So the believers became followers. Now, the people that received the word now became followers. That is the second stage of the cycle. Now, to become become a a follower. Verse 7. So that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. Now, the third stage is to become an example of the word. So now, the first stage, you receive the word, then you follow the word. Sometimes when you follow, you follow blindly because you are new in the system. But as you keep on following, now you acquire the systems and the know-hows of the kingdom. Every kingdom has a domain and a king, and every domain has rules and regulations that govern that kingdom. So when you come into the kingdom of God, there are, there are 
rules that govern the kingdom. So when people begin to follow, they may be following blindly, but as they keep on following, they acquire the skill to live according to the principles of the kingdom. And when that happens, they become examples of what they are following. So the people now became followers and became examples of what they are following. After several years of following our bishop and following the great men of God, what has to happen is that we have have to begin to exhibit traits that can be seen in the one we are following. That is why Paul said that follow me as I follow Christ. So they became followers. Verse 8. Sorry, they became examples. And from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God what is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything. So now this is what Paul is saying. After they became followers and became examples, now the word of God sounded from them to the people of Macedonia and to Achaia and beyond. And Paul is saying that this happened in such a way that even we, we no longer have anything else to tell the people. When people follow and become examples, the next stage of the cycle is to proclaim the gospel. If you have been a Christian for so many years, you have followed for so many years and have become an example and you have become stagnant and the word is not resounding from you, then you have not been complete in the cycle of a believer. So believers, you must begin to let the word of God resound from you. The word that has been in you must begin to come out from you. And that is when soul winning becomes a collective responsibility. That is when soul winning becomes what the whole church is working towards in Christ. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 9 down to 12, it summarizes this cycle I'm talking about. The Bible says that he that descended was the same that ascended, and he gave gifts unto men. He gave some to be apostles, and some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be teachers and pastors. He said, for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. The saints are being perfected for the work of the ministry. If you are being perfected, it is not for your beautification. It is for the work of the ministry. The reason why God has given you an apostle in this place is for him to equip you and empower you so that you become effective for the work of the ministry. So anybody that sits under the apostle and sits under prophet and sits under the teacher and is still not being effective in the kingdom is wasting the vacant the, the position in, in, in the Christ. So we are being perfected for the work of the ministry and for the edification of the body of Christ. When you read the next verse, he said that till we all come to a unity in the faith and attain the stature and the measure of Christ. So Christ becomes our standard. We are being perfected to work like the way he worked, to win souls like the way he won souls. So don't get to the middle of the cycle and reside and dwell them. You must advance and become a soul winner. That is the ultimate goal of your salvation. You are saved to save others. So if you and I can be fruitful in the area of soul winning, then we must extend the gospel.
gospel beyond the boundaries of the church. Now it is estimated that 99% of those who don't know Christ will not even come to church at all. It means that if we have to sit in church and speak to those who per chance come to church, then we are targeting only 1% of the world of unbelievers. So in order to win the souls, we have to go to where the souls are. When a man wants to fish, he does not go to his bathroom sink to fish. He goes to where the fishes are. The fishes are in the seas, the rivers, the streams, the ponds. The fishes are in the clubs, the ghettos, the marketplaces. Jesus said we should go out there to all these places and proclaim the gospel. So it means the greatest opportunity to win souls does not lie inside the church but lies outside the church. Give me the first Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 again. Let me explain something there. I'm ending in about five minutes. So, this is what Paul is saying. He said, For our gospel came not unto you in word. So I want you to take note of something. He said, Our gospel did not come to you. So it means the gospel went to them. The gospel has to travel to where the people are. Now, the gospel rises on the wheels of men. A man must carry the gospel to where the gospel is needed. So Paul said that our gospel came not unto you in word only. They carried the gospel from where they were to where the people needed it. And so this morning I charge you and I beseech you brethren by the mercies of God that we carry the word of God to the world of unbelievers and begin to preach the gospel in the streets, in the market, begin to preach the gospel in the hospitals, in the buses. We have to become more aggressive as far as soul winning is concerned. Clap your hands for Jesus. As I round up, I just want to go through the benefits of soul winning. Just briefly, number one, soul winning is the key to answered prayers. Let's go to John 15, 16. When we understand some of these things, we will not repeat certain prayers over and over and over. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. He said, just go out there and bear fruit. And, and, and bring your fruit and let your fruit remain. Then after that, he gives you a blank check. And whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name. So that means that these are certain keys and principles of the kingdom that if we obey, life will be easier. 
The word of God contains so many promises. But you are not who the word of God says you are until you do what the word says you should do. So whenever God gives a promise, there is a condition that is attached. Jesus Christ, in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 1, he says that uh, all, all Theophilus, he said, all the things that Jesus began to do and to teach. So Jesus himself was a doer of whatever he taught. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Until you do the word, until you live the word, you cannot be a product of that word. There are people that have been praying for years. Just win one soul for Christ and your prayers are answered. Number two. John 15, verse 1 to 3. Soul winning is the key to divine preservation or longevity. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit. He take it away. If you are unfruitful, you are cut off. You don't last in the system. In order to preserve whatever you are doing, in order to last, you must be able to win souls. Any branch that does not bear fruit, I will cut it off. Sometimes the reason why the business is dying is because it has been cut off. Soul winning brings preservation. And he says that the next verse. Okay, yeah, that place. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purged it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So in other words, the one that is bearing fruit, because it is useful, the, the other version says he prunes it. He keeps it in such a way that it will be preserved, that it will constantly bear fruit. So, soul winning is a key to longevity and preservation. The one that is winning the most souls to this ministry can never die. Until their own appointed time. Because when they die, who will bring souls to the house of so God? Clap your hands for Jesus. And I end on this. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. He that winneth Soul is wise. Soul winning is the key to divine wisdom. The Bible says that those who know how to win souls, they are wise. I want you to just close your eyes on this note and just bow down your head. And I want you to pray to God and tell him from the bottom of your heart that from today 
I want my fruitfulness to encompass the expansion of God's kingdom. The expansion of this ministry. I want to avail myself and go out with the word of God. And preach to all nations. Anytime a word like this comes, it comes to revive us and stir up our zeal to do these things. Just speak to the Lord right now and tell him that he should help you. He should stir up the zeal in you. He should give you the boldness to speak the gospel and preach the gospel wherever you find yourself. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Says, oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Oh, how I love Jesus. I just want to entreat somebody who has been inspired by the word of God this morning that you want to begin to win souls. Whenever we make a move, the grace of God that is at work is released over our lives and we are able to accomplish what we have purposed our heart to do. As our eyes are closed, anybody who feels that I really want to do this, let prayer be released for me so that I can have the grace to do it. I just want you to come and as our resident pastor is here, he will just release a word of prayer over your life. Please, as our eyes are closed, you want to go out and do that work. Maybe you are shy. Maybe you, you lack the boldness to do it. Whatever the reason is, I want you to come. Just walk and come. Sorry, and and let, let us release a word of prayer over your life. And receive that grace and the boldness to win souls for this ministry. Please come. Oh, sorry, bro. The word of God does not operate in vacuum. The word comes to accomplish a purpose. I know there are people here that have been stirred up and they want this fire to remain. Please come. Because because he Love me because he first loved me because he first loved me because he first loved me. Let's clap our hands and receive my boy. 
listen. You see, it is one thing to listen to what God has said through his word. And it is another thing to practice what God is saying. Amen. One of the things I have learned this morning is that the confirmation of your Christian life and your salvation is your ability to be listened. And she said, Oh, you need say that. It ends up with the fact that you are not a Christian. Amen. So what also is saying is that for those of us who have received the word and want to renew our commitment to soul winning and evangelism, it is time that we come for God to release that grace upon us. If you have that longing that I don't know what I say, you need a deeper, you need God to rekindle that spirit deeper with you. If you are here like that, please rise to your feet. Come. Let's pray with you. Can we all rise to our feet? Obi, I'm sorry. That every weekend when we come here for outreach, for evangelism on Saturdays, you will join us to go out there and preach the gospel. Lift your hands with your eyes closed. If there is anybody here like that, please walk up to me. Please walk up to me. I want every eye closed. Please walk up to me. Want to renew your commitment to soul winning, to evangelism. Come, come, come. The same way you step out when we say you are believing God for a visa, marriage, money. That's the same way you have to step out. And she said, This idea you will come. But then, this idea won't back. And God sees your heart. Yeah, God sees your heart. God sees your heart. Lift your hands. Can we all lift our hands? Even now, you can be there. Father, I pray for your sons and your daughters that have come before you, bowing down before your throne and saying that we want to give our life to the ministry of the word and preach the gospel to all nations. Father, I pray, let every grace that makes so winning effective and powerful and productive come upon them. Let every spirit of fear operating in their lives be destroyed in the name of Jesus. For the Bible says that you have not given us the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have given us the spirit of adoption, wherefore we cry, Abba, Father. I pray, let boldness operate in their lives. These are soldiers in the kingdom. And my prayer is that when you are answering prayers of believers, let the request of these ones be the first because they have dedicated themselves for this work. Empower them, O God, 
empower them, O oh God, with every spiritual giftings and blessings. The Bible said that we should go out there and make disciples. And you said that signs and wonders shall follow us. Let signs and wonders follow them. Let signs and wonders follow them. Let the cripples begin to walk at the sound of the word. Let the lame begin to walk and let the blind eyes begin to see. Let testimonies follow wherever they go to proclaim the gospel. Father, I thank you. I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are victorious. 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 Follow the man of God and let him talk with you. Can we clap your hands for Jesus? Can you clap your hands? Let's give God praise this morning. Hallelujah.